This short video is just an orientation to the Rankine Cycle Simulator. So I'm going to begin by talking about each of the blocks of information that we have available. The first block here is the operating parameters. So that's where we set a whole bunch of the operating parameters for the cycle operation. And I'm going to come back and talk about each of those individually a little bit later on. The second block of information gives the pressure, temperature, enthalpy, entropy, and quality at each of the state points around the cycle. The third block of information here is the operating conditions. So this gives the work and heat transfer rates in each of the components in the cycle and gives some performance parameters, back work ratio, thermal efficiency, and Carnot efficiency for the cycle. The next block of information is a TS diagram, so a temperature versus entropy diagram. We see the liquid vapor region for the working fluid here, which is water. We see the cycle plotted here, and the numbers of the state points correspond to the numbers in the state point property table. One thing I should point out about this TS diagram, this red line is a line of constant pressure up at the steam generator pressure. So you'll notice in the liquid region here, it's lifted up off of the saturated liquid line. Now if this thing were to be plotted to scale, that would actually lie essentially right on top of the saturated liquid line. And I can return to that condition by changing this liquid temperature plotting bump down to zero. So if I go to zero here, we see that line of constant pressure lies almost exactly on top of the saturated liquid line. So that's actually a realistic plot, plotted using accurate numbers. However, it's very, very difficult to see the pump process down here from three to four, and it's very difficult to see what's happening along that saturated liquid line. So it's traditional to plot that, at least in sketches, a little bit higher than the saturated liquid line, just so we can see what's going on. And in this tool, we can control that with this liquid temperature plotting bump. The last uh, block of information here is just a schematic diagram of the, of the plant. So we have pump, steam generator, turbine, and a condenser right now. Again, the state point numbering corresponds to the TS diagram and the table of state points. The other thing shown on here is the energy transfers associated with each of the components. So pump work, the steam generator, heat addition, turbine work, and the condenser heat rejection. Those are shown on there as well. So now we're going to go back and play around with some of the inputs and just show how all of this works. So there's some default conditions, of course, that are given here when we first start up the app. So first we'll just look at what the blocks of information are. There's several pressures that we can set in the system, uh, three temperatures, the mass flow rate through the system we can set, we have capability here for an open and a closed feed water heater, and this is where we set the percent that is extracted in those devices. Next one here is subcooling for the closed feed water heater exit, and then finally the isentropic efficiency of the turbine and the pump. So we'll do a quick demo of all of these inputs just to see how they affect the other blocks of information in the simulator. So if we go back to the TS diagram here, we notice the inlet to the turbine is actually on the saturated vapor line. And typically we would want that superheated a fair bit to get the turbine process out into the vapor region instead of being in the mixture region. So I'm gonna go up here to this temperature of the steam generator exit and just increase that up to some value, almost 500 degrees. And so we can see the app has recalculated everything. The TS diagram is now move the turbine process out mostly into the vapor region. And of course the state points and operating conditions have all been recalculated. Now returning to the pressure block here, we see that currently there's only two pressures that are active. The steam generator pressure and the condenser pressure. So that's the pressure down here in the condenser and the pressure up here in the steam generator. And we can set these to whatever value we want. I'm just going to go to quite a high steam generator pressure here and demonstrate a couple of things. Notice here our steam generator pressure is very, very close to the critical point. And I'm just going to go a little bit higher just to show that we can actually go to a super critical pressure in the steam generator. And I'm just going to return that back to its default conditions just uh, to continue with the demo here. So here we do have 
phase change in the steam generator as we would typically. The condenser pressure we can also play with, but I won't bother demonstrating that here. Now the next thing we're going to do is add a reheater to this cycle. You'll notice the reheater pressure here. There is provision for two reheaters, reheater one and two, but these are inactive because there is no reheater yet. The way we turn on a reheater is by adding a temperature gain in the reheater. So I'll just increase this uh, temperature in reheater one uh, to 146 degrees and we see now on the TS diagram a reheater has been added and the temperature increase in that reheater is 146 degrees. And we'll notice that a reheater has been added in our schematic diagram and there's additional state points that showing up here as well. Also an additional energy transfer by heat addition in reheater. We can also add a second reheater if we wish. So we see now we have two reheaters, one from state point two to three, and then a second one from four to five. And again, that second reheater is shown up in the schematic diagram as well. We also have provision here to add feed water heaters. So I'm going to add an open feed water heater just by increasing this percent extraction uh, from zero up to 13. We see a lot of additional state points showing up and additional heat and work transfers showing up. And we see in our schematic diagram, we now have an open feed water heater added into the system as well. Uh, finally, we can also add a closed feed water heater and I'll just add a small extraction there. So now we have both an open feed water heater and a closed feed water heater. And of course, all the corresponding uh, additional state points are shown up on the TS diagram as well. And you'll notice we now have five turbine stages because we have two reheaters, a closed feed water heater, and an open feed water heater. And of course, a lot of additional state points have shown up because of that. Now that we have reheaters and feed water heaters active, you'll notice back here in the pressure block that we can now adjust the pressure at which those four components are operating as well. I won't bother changing any of those, but if you want to play around with the simulator, you can change the pressure of any of those components. I'm just going to go back to a little bit simpler configuration to uh, demonstrate a couple of other things. So I'll press the reset button here, which just takes us back to our default conditions. I'm going to add a little bit of uh, temperature to the steam generator exit just to get our turbine process out here. Next thing I'm going to demonstrate is turbine and pump efficiency. So our turbine currently is 100% efficient and we can drop that down to say 72% efficient with this input here. And so you'll notice we now have an entropy increase across the turbine. It's drifting off to the right as that expansion occurs because we no longer have an isentropic turbine. If we want to see the isentropic process on here, as well as the real process, there's a checkbox down here that we can select, and there we get our isentropic turbine down to state 2S, and then the real turbine over here to state point 2. And I'll just turn that off again just to keep this clean. We can also reduce our pump efficiency if we wish, so pump efficiency down to 82%. And so point 0.4 is no longer immediately above point 0.3. Now there's only been a very, very slight change there. I have to move the pump efficiency down to an unrealistically low number before we really see any significant change on the TS diagram. So there I'm down to a pump efficiency of only 8% and we're starting to see an increase in entropy across the pump. So this has been just a quick tour through the simulator. Uh, feel free to give it a try and play around with lots of these other inputs that I haven't really talked about very much, and I hope it's useful to you. Thank you very much for watching.